up until now, it has been relatively easy to co convince yourself to kind of sit on the sidelines because you may not want to be even known as the dry eye guy or gal, whatever, gender neutral there. Um, and uh, I, 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 I'm not really, I don't really think of myself as uh, being in what, what I would even call the dry eye center of excellence because I may be, you know, the cataract guy, the LASIK guy, the DMEC, PDEC guy, the cornea transplant person. Um, but uh, dry eye is, uh, is, is, uh, is something that we, we invariably see in our practice. And so I'm going to talk about kind of how to integrate this into your practice. You've seen how it's done in these practices, um, but it's done very differently, successfully for them. But how do you decide, you know, where you want to, uh, uh, where you want to be? So I think it's important to find your level, your motivation. You know, same way when, when I certify LASIK surgeons, I like to know why, why are you getting into LASIK, for example. And I find that the people that say that, well, I feel like I have to do it. You know, I don't want to sit on the sidelines while my competitors are getting into LASIK. Those patients have a very different trajectory than someone who says, I have a real passion for refractive surgery. That's really where I want to be. Dry eye is really not different from that. So you've got to find your level, your motivation. And you know, I kind of think of this Oreo cookie. A lot of the folks up here are this top layer, okay? I'm going to offer this dry eye center of excellence. You know, the benefits is that you, know, you can do the research. You could you know, get invited to be on a speaker panel like we are this morning. You've got corporate relationships. There's business aspects of it. There's financial aspects of it. But there are genuine risks, and this may not be for everybody. Um, it, is a, it, it takes a real commitment. Okay, if I'm going to do this, what am I going to give up? You know, it's, it can be incredibly disruptive. There's a lot of the technologies that could be, uh, that could kind of bring a lot of noise to this. Okay, I'm looking at obstructive glands. I think those glands ought to be open but that doesn't match my lipid layer or my osmolarity or my whatever. I mean, I think you still have to be a doctor. You've got to talk to your patients. You've got to examine your patients. Blocked glands, red eyes. Yes, you may be there for cataract surgery, but you have another problem that you've just been ignoring and attributing to getting older, even though your doctor sent you here for uh, cataract surgery. You've also got to avoid the customer experience that you know, gives you an online uh, comment that says, you know, I went there for cataract surgery. Five hours later, all they're talking to me about is my dry eye and I've got this big bill. So, so you have to balance all of that. You know, similarly, there's this bottom layer, you know, dry eye. It's not my thing. I've got enough on my plate as it is. I'd like to you know, put this off to the side. But you know, you, if you do that, you are in a shrinking group of patients that are resisting change, okay? The, the fourth most common question I get when I'm offering Lipiflow is why doesn't insurance cover it? The number one question is why didn't my doctor that sent me recognize this sooner? Why wasn't I treated sooner? That's the number one question. So the risks here is that you're, you're really not providing good care for your patient. You know, you can't just say, you know what, I'm not the glaucoma doctor, okay? So I, I'm going to ignore this progressive ch uh, disease that gets harder to treat as it gets worse. You know, you've got uh, your reputation, you've got your practice. You're really, your survival strategy here, if you're going to continue to be in this layer, is to diagnose and refer. You need to know who's your, you know, if you're in Houston, you know, where's, where's Richard Yee? If you're in, you know, in Virginia, where's John Shepard? You've got to know who to send these patients to, you know, like the way I treat glaucoma. I diagnose it, I refer it, that type of thing. So I'm not really in this dry eye center of excellence, but I'm in this middle layer sweet spot where I can continue to operate. I've gone from operating four days a week down to three days a week, but it, it's, it's, it's my way of integrating dry eye into a busy, busy practice. And you know what, I would even say that this addresses over 95% of the patients. There's really minimal risk, minimal disruption, but how do you do it? Well, I've adopted this kind of you know, Brian Regan way of classification where am I gonna be a proactive or a reactive 
uh, treater to each patient. So in other words, I've got the asymptomatic cataract patient. We have a discussion. Most of these patients are truly symptomatic, but when you talk to them about it, they, you know what, I just thought I was getting older. Yeah, my eyes are dry, they feel tired at night, uh, they turn a little bit red, but you know, whatever, I'm 75 years old, I just thought I was getting older. So you have this discussion. You talk about your treatment, you talk about the maintenance, we'll get into that. Are you gonna treat this prior to surgery, proactively? Or are you gonna say, well, you know, I'm gonna to have to budget for that doctor. I had a patient just in the, the day before coming here. She's there for her sixth lipoflow treatment. You know, sometimes I think, well, boy, that's, 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 that's a, a lot of treatments. And she says, you know, I just budget for it. I like to have it every 10 to 12 months. And now that I've had the lipoflow for five years, she has it on a pretty much yearly basis, just budgets for it and it's like everything else in her life, and so she just, just accounts for that. So are you gonna have the discussion? Someone says, well, that's not in my budget right now. Just be aware. By definition, if I'm doing surgery, I'm going to uh, disrupt nerves, I'm going to disrupt your ocular surface, I'm going to put you on medications that are going to make your dry eye more symptomatic. We're gonna probably revisit this after surgery particularly if you're using a premium lens, a multifocal, you're gonna to need to address that ocular surface. But you put the decision, you educate, and you put the decision to them. Even, you know, the concept of informed consent is really a misnomer. We educate, they decide, we're consenting to operate. So, so you know, think about dry eye. The old was, you know, in the old times, your dry eye is in it, you're not making enough tears, you may have a hormonal aspect to this. We're gonna give you tear replacement plugs, restasis. It was really treating symptoms. Well, that's the way we used to treat macular degeneration, and, you'd, and you wouldn't do that now. You'd be more proactive in a progressive disease. Same thing with glaucoma. You know, somebody says, w you know, would you treat the asymptomatic dry eye patient? Of course I would. I would say a full 30% of my lipoflow patients are there not for dry eye treatment, but again, same with glaucoma. You're gonna treat proactively the asymptomatic patient. Now, dry eye is really by bombing gland dysfunction. It's not tear quantity, it's tear quality, tear instability. Uh, the lipid components become the focus. So, so now we're more proactive in educating our patients, recognizing, diagnosing, and treating a disease that can impact the structure over time. So, Awareness is 85% of this. You know, this is a patient. This is actually a retired OBGYN surgeon. He's there for cataract surgery. Uh, he practiced his entire life. He was sent to me by not, uh, for, his son's an ophthalmologist. And, and he was sent to me for cataract surgery from Knoxville, Tennessee. He practiced at, a, a, in, in, at Summit, New Jersey for his entire career. But I canceled his surgery because I wanted to address his lids, his ocular surface. I brought it, oh yeah, my eyes, they get red, they get red all the time. They used to be worse than they are now. And so we, had, we canceled his surgery, we treated his lids first, sent him back to Knoxville and had him come back two and a half weeks later for the actual procedure. So it's awareness. Again, this is not complicated. The wind is at your back. You diagnose, you see structure, you see it's mechanical, you see it's an obstruction, you treat it, you treat it with a, with a, with a, with a treatment that is extraordinarily effective in over 93% of my patients. They're very happy. The 7% that need more than this in treatment, that they, they will sometimes go to my dry eye specialist. And then there's the maintenance. You know, Avanova is something I used myself this morning. I wouldn't even classify myself as having the degree of dry eye problems that some of the folks on the, on the, uh, on the, on the stand have. Hydro Eye, I used it myself. Uh, Zydra, I'm new to this. I want to learn about it at this. Uh, uh, this I, uh, I think I prescribed seven uh, to seven people this past week. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to learning more about it. And maintenance, you know, Lipiflow is, is uh, a great treatment. I would say the average patient comes back in three plus years for another treatment. Some of the patients 
a lot of them don't want to get back to where they were, all the way back to where they were before they have another treatment. So they budget. They may have it every two to three years. Uh, you know, the price is down, so we're having people opt for, for doing it more. Um, I'm, I'm relatively inexpensive. I'm only $800 per eye, $1,600 for both eyes. And when people think about that, you know, in the context of kind of a Starbucks cup of coffee per day, it becomes a very uh, easy way to think about this and put it into their, uh, into their budget. But again, these other treatments are very helpful um, in, in maintaining these patients. So again, you're the busy surgeon. Uh, I don't know that you need to add all these things into your practice, uh, but it, it's been very easy for me. One of the easiest things I've done, I would say Lipiflow, I would say the, its its closest rival has been implementing laser cataract surgery into my practice and for, as far as something very easy to do. So with that said, uh, I thank you so much for including me in this uh, fine group today. Thank you.